We feel, after vast and in-depth research surrounding many of the oldest ancient ruins upon Earth, that many of these heavily eroded sites were themselves built by highly advanced civilizations. This fact indicates to us that many more ancient ruins must predate those which were built with such precision. We have, on many occasions, covered ancient sites which clearly underwent more than one advanced building phase. Sites that were clearly re-inhabited, on more than one occasion, by groups who utilized such builds in order to flourish themselves, achieving a level of technological prowess which allowed them to either build atop the advanced settlement they found themselves within, or with the Great Pyramids, capable of undertaking an enormous conservation effort, now seen in the form of the casing stones. Additionally, on many occasions, we have shared numerous perplexing uparts found littering the mines of Earth and indeed the coal seems within. A reoccurring date of around 300 million years ago, attributed to many of these relics, any ruins from this same area would have undoubtedly turned to dust by now. Just how old is human history here upon our Earth? Due to academia's requirement of producing books, filled with the so-called perplexing answers for the sites you seek, any funded individual studying these now prehistoric sites will only ever attribute them to individuals who have been studied in depth, these being the largest intact archaeological finds surrounding more modern inhabitations, often conveniently overlooking any explanation of how these groups built such sites in favor of bombarding you with lifestyle data of their most conveniently well-studied imposter. Has civilization been flourishing and restarting here on our planet far longer than any of us have been led to believe? Cappadocia, for example, within Turkey. We feel that this site is clear evidence of human civilization, stretching far back into Earth's history. Once a bustling city, filled with ancient dwelling carved into the bedrock. This prehistoric site is eroding away in front of our modern eyes, clearly created by a group of highly capable rock cutters. Its true grandeur, however, now lost to history. We feel that, regardless of academic opinion, there are countless sites around the world which tell the same story. That we, as a species, have indeed outlived our own oldest ruins. It is a reality we find highly compelling. An enormous chunk is absent, not only from our own human history, but also from the history of our planet, the true extent of which, according to the considerable collection of uparts gathered over the years, was filled with the flourish of vast technological developments by many civilizations. This, although somehow missing from academic teachings, the reasons for this absence are deep and far-reaching. Religious institutions, scientific theory, yet the unfortunate root of all these motivations, seemingly fueling this orchestrated ignorance, is money. Certain theories are attached to substantially profitable endeavors. Therefore, academia is very unlikely to budge, even when confronted with evidence to prove they are wrong. They simply profit from the continuation of a lie. One of our most compelling defenses for our accusation and the evidence we feel most condemning of academia's ignorance to this obvious truth is the highly complex, clearly advanced, seemingly impossible ruins found all over Earth attributed by these said institutions to the most convenient recent ancestor. Not only do many of these structures still evade explanation today, but all of these so-called experts, undoubtedly handsomely paid to paint specific pictures of the past, fall silent in unison when asked to provide explanations to their claims. Not only how our modern ancestors built the palaces we share on our channel, but also why they never recorded such tasks, anywhere within any of their substantial writings, or indeed artistic illustrative documentation of their lives, 
indeed found drenching the structures they claim is their own, yet, apparently, not able of building. One of the most amazing, recently realized examples is undoubtedly Quelap, a site we recently explored, and although the site has been known to the modern man for many centuries, it has taken aircraft photography and a keen observer to actually realize the truly astonishing task that Quelap actually was, originally thought to be a walled fortress, an astonishing ruin from the ground alone, yet viewing the site from the sky shows that not only was an enormous natural plateau artificially walled off, but the entire back of the fortress was amazingly backfilled with earth. The city of Tsinsunsan, within modern-day Mexico, once had a population of between 25,000 and 30,000. However, when the Spanish arrived in the 1520s, the conquest virtually decimated the population of the city. This clear evidence of how easily civilizations come and go, yet academia remains deliberately oblivious of this fact. The extraordinarily circular structures found within the city, claimed to be pyramids, have merely been ignored and assumed to have been the work of these once decimated modern inhabitants, completely ignoring not only the astonishingly precise stonework, but also the fact that just like Quelap, the site contains astonishing earthworking, created with unbelievable precision, and like Quelap, containing circular structures. Was this site once built by the same people? An incredible site, one which demands astute and honest research. Kuri Kancha, originally named Inti Kancha or Intiwazi, is an ancient temple supposedly constructed in dedication of Inti, who was an ancient Incan sun god. However, like many other ancient ruins that can be found all over Earth, particularly within Peru, it hides stonework which is indicative of lost knowledge. Incan architecture built upon much older, far more superior architectural ruins. Located at the old Inca capital of Cusco, the original structure is believed to have been destroyed during a war in the 16th century with the Spanish. However, what remains is enough to clearly indicate that extremely ancient foundations are hidden by a more modern structure. In fact, they are built upon a structure once built by an extremely advanced civilization currently lost somewhere within our distant past. Not only displaying the same enigmatic notches at Ollante Tambo, Yangshan Quarry, and many other sites, could these notches have been used for the method of placement? Although rarely shared, Kori Kansha preserves some of the most exquisite ashlar stonework anywhere on Earth, undoubtedly left by this long-lost civilization. Who were these people, capable of such superior stonework so far within the past? How long ago did they flourish? What other amazing things are they waiting to teach us? Kori Kansha is undoubtedly a remarkable place. When the Incas presumably re-inhabited this unexplained habitation, the gold, which coated many of the statues and walls, preserved until the Spanish invaded in 1532. The Spanish colonists built the Church of Santo Domingo on the site. A declaration that almost accompanied with destruction is seemingly more honest than the Incas' original claim of ownership. Another structure that not only displays unexplainable stone working techniques, but reinforces our accusation that many ancient cultures, not just the Incas, are guilty of stealing an intimidating heritage from a long-lost advanced civilization for their own gains. The more modern ruins of the ancient temple were seemingly built using andesite stone, tracked down to quarries in Wakato, located around 7 kilometers from Cusco. However, the structure also features walls of diorite, these being the original workmanship this, according to a number of independent researchers, who indeed confirm that the diorite structure is what's left of the first temple. Who built these amazing structures, found not only dotted all over Peru, but also the Earth? How did these amazing people know about constructing earthquake-proof architecture so far within our past? And maybe, most importantly, why does academia ignore them so? Questions we feel demand answers.
Cori Cancha is undoubtedly a very amazing, very ancient place. And the more we learn regarding these sites, the closer we become to the genius of their builders. When one begins to realize that many of the ancient sites found here upon our planet have, throughout the years of modern study, only ever been attributed to civilizations we have actually been able to study in detail, rather than their true creators, a highly advanced group of individuals, once capable of constructing awe-inspiring structures using unimaginably huge blocks, fortresses perfectly built, with stones placed together as if cut to size. These stone structures have come in many shapes and styles, yet undoubtedly the most impressive among the collection is polygonal walls. Many of the most popular are located within Peru, although their fascinating existence spans much further afield. Delphi was once an ancient sanctuary, famous for being home of Pythia, an oracle who was consulted about important decisions throughout the ancient world. Interestingly, the Greeks considered Delphi the navel of the world, with a mysterious stone monument known as the Omphalos of Delphi, having once been placed there to signify this. Located on the southwestern slope of Mount Parnassus within Greece, undoubtedly the most compelling feature of the site and the one we feel indicates the true identity, and thus its actual immense age, is its polygonal wall. That, according to academia, was somehow built by the Greeks from around 510 to 323 BC. However, the site's wall, although rarely academically mentioned, is in fact lost knowledge. Or more precisely, an advanced method of ancient construction that we are yet able to explain or unravel. We have long stated that many of the ancient sites around the world were seemingly built prior to some form of reset within human knowledge and development. Structures built with such skill and with such enormous blocks that these surviving remnants may be all that is left to now indicate their once existence. Thankfully, however, due to the unfathomed skill involved, these remaining fragments are, for all intent and purposes, out-of-place artifacts within our own history. Was the entire site merely reoccupied and claimed as another's creation? A claim conveniently allowing academics to avoid appearing out of their depth. Who built Delphi? When was it built? Were the ancient theaters, stadiums, and statues, attributed to the Romans and the Greeks, actually creations left by a people far older? With such unexplainable features at said locations, we find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.